Rat in the Skull by Rog Phillips Dr Joseph McNair was not the sort of person one would expect him to be in the light of what happened. Indeed, it is safe to say that until the summer of 1955 he was more normal, better adjusted than the average college professor. And we have every reason to believe that he remained so, in spite of having stepped out of his chosen field. At the age of 34, he had to his credit a college textbook on advanced calculus, an introductory physics, and 72 papers that had appeared in various journals, copies of which were in neat order in a special section of the bookcase in his office at the university, and duplicate copies of which were in equally neat order in his office at home. None of these were in the field of psychology, the field in which he was shortly to become famous or infamous. But anyone who studies the published writings of Dr. McNair must inevitably conclude that he was a competent, responsible scientist and a firm believer in institutional research, research by teams rather than in private research and go it alone secrecy, the course he eventually followed. In fact, there is every reason to believe he followed this course with the greatest of reluctance, aware of its pitfalls, and that he took every precaution that was humanly possible. Certainly, on that day in late August 1955, at the little cabin on the Russian River, a hundred miles upstate from the university, when Dr. McNair completed his paper on an experimental approach to the psychological phenomenon of verification, he had not the slightest thought of going it alone. It was mid-afternoon. His wife, Alice, was dozing on the small dock that stretched out into the water, her slim figure tanned a smooth brown that was just a shade lighter than her hair. Their eight-year-old son, Paul, was fifty yards upstream, playing with some other boys, their shouts the only sound except for the whisper of rushing water and the sound of wind in the trees. Dr. McNair, in swimming trunks, his lean, muscular body hardly tanned at all, emerged from the cabin and came out onto the dock. "'Wake up, Alice,' he said, nudging her with his foot. "'You have a husband again.' "'Well, it's about time,' Alice said, turning over on her back and looking up at him, smiling in answer. 